It's true. One of the reasons that people get so freaked out about subnetting in the context of the CCNA is there is some math involved. But we're going to break it down and make it simple for you. And as you're going to see, it's nothing that difficult. And in fact, when it comes to a CCNA exam, you'll actually end up hoping that there's a lot of these types of questions because they're just simple math questions and it's, you know, black or white. It, there's no gray areas. The answer is the answer, and it's, it's really easy once you figure out how to handle these types of questions. We're going to be looking at conversion in this video, and we know decimal, but what is often a challenge for us is binary. We don't think in terms of zeros and ones. Here we can see an octet value from an IPv4 address in binary. So remember, there's eight bits. They're going to be one or zero in that position. And so here we can see an octet, one of the four numbers that we would see in an IP address, and it's 11001101 in this case. Now, how would we convert that to decimal or vice versa? Well, I always use this simple little chart that gives the values in decimal for each of the bit positions. It also gives how they're mathematically created in the top row, two to raised to the seventh, for example, is 128. 2 raised to the 6 is 64. I've got this chart memorized, and actually this chart is something that I'm going to put on the scratch paper during my CCNA exam. So they give you scratch writing materials, and I write this down right when I start the CCNA exam, and it's going to be the chart that helps me answer so many different questions. So let's see it in action. Let's say we have that binary number that we saw, 11001101. What would that value be in decimal? Well, it's really easy for us to figure out. Notice I've placed those bits in the appropriate position in this chart, and we're just going to add up the 128 plus the 64 plus the 8 plus the four, plus the one. And the answer is going to be 205. So notice, while there is math going on here, it is super simple math. I mean, we just really had to do addition here. Notice that we could go the other direction as well. So we could have a number like 212, and we could easily calculate what this number is going to be in binary. And how you would do this is you would do subtraction. So you would come in and you would take the 212 and you would look at this first bit position here and you would say, can I take 128 from that and not have a negative value? And the answer is yes, we could. So we would subtract 128 from the 212. And notice that indicates that there is the one in that bit position. So the, uh, you know what, I'm going to cheat. Alexa, what's 212 minus 128? 212 minus 128 is 84. Thanks, Alexa. Uh, be nice to have her in the exam with us, wouldn't it? So next, we have an 84 rem remainder. Can we take 64 from that value? Yes, we can. So now we're going to subtract the 64. And look at this. That's so easy. I can do it in my head. That's a remainder of 20. Can we take 32 from 20? The answer is no, we can't. So it's a zero in that bit position. Can we take 16 from 20? The answer is yes, we can. And we are left with a remainder of four. And so we'd have a zero in this position, a one in this position, and that takes us to our zero and a zero and a zero. So 212 in binary is one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. And that's how easy it is to do. And of course, you can check your answer when you're practicing like this against a scientific calculator. What is 200? Oh, looks like I'm already in hexadecimal notation. Yikes. So I'm going to want to get into the uh, just decimal. I think let me just uh, what do I do here? Ah, there we go. Ten. OK, so let's clear this. And then we're going to do 212. And notice it shows you the binary right here. So it's 11010100, just what we had calculated. And that is so cool 
that as we type our decimal numbers, we're going to get the binary display right below it in this free calculator in the Mac. So if you've never done that stuff before, if you've never gone from decimal to binary or binary to decimal, make sure you practice a few. Just go ahead and make up a random number. Think of a random number between, you know, 1 and 255 and get in there and practice with that. Practice with some randomized sequences of binary in, you know, eight bits of an octet and see if you can convert back to decimal and vice versa. Get good at that because it's going to come in handy for us as we get deeper into subnetting.